These two guys have Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Write it down. You like writing things down. Write that down. I don't have a pencil. Well, remember that. Then. Write this down. Write that down. Welcome to the most high wire act segment in all of sports media. The only show in America dumb enough to put statistics next to our predictions. It's write that down every single Wednesday. Write this down. On Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd and a football edition on Purple Daily every single week as well. Uh, boys, it's I'm guessing there's going to be some Twins baseball predictions today because the Twins play their first regular season baseball game tomorrow. They play their first game at Target Field on April 4th at 3.10 p.m. And the forecast looks pretty, pretty Looking good. Pretty good. 55 to 60 degrees sunshine right now. We'll, we'll see if that changes, but you can be a part of the excitement on opening day at Target Field, April 4th, 310 versus the Guardians. First 10,000 fans through the gates receive an opening weekend beanie. You can see Royce Lewis, Byron Buxton, Pablo Lopez, Carlos Correa, and more at Target Field. Secure your spot at twins.com slash tickets. That's twins.com slash tickets. How are we feeling here, gentlemen? Good. I'm, ex- I'm ex- good. extremely good. excited about the start of the baseball season. Not that excited about this so far. Not off to a great start. Swings all screwed up. I'm very. I feel good. I'm Walner like right now. I'm trying to say I was working on stuff, which I see now. He's like, I've been working on stuff. <laughs> just honing some of my obscure sport yeah. predictions. It's I'm okay. one for. I'm one for forty. I'm just working on stuff. <laughs> so well, uh, here's how it works. Before we get to the accountability session. It's three predictions from everybody on the show every single week. They must be quantifiable. Those are the parameters. We keep track of batting averages and home runs here on Write That Down. And listeners out there, if you want to be a guest listener participant like Chase is about to be for the first time, you can send Declan a message through the Score North app. There's a feedback tab, and we will get you scheduled for some time in the coming weeks. Okay, Judd, we will hold you accountable first. A lot of things came I off the board. That's just a terrible oh. start. Oh. My God. I, I'm, I am seriously considering resigning. Wow, Please you're don't. just going to be done, huh? But, oh, my God. I just, I'm so upset right now. We'll start with the bad. You said the Twins will trade Trevor Larnick before opening day. Still, I need a hug. You said Matt Walner would lead the Twins in spring training home runs. Oh, good God. Nico Goodrum would make the Twins roster he out of got spring training. He, he just got traded to the Rays this morning. <laughs> Who'd they get back? Three bats and a donut? P, yeah, PBT, I don't know. Player to be a, new, a new analytics software program. From the Rays? I'll take it. Thad Levine will not be with the Twins by opening day of 2024. Sweet mother of mercy. The Twins will acquire a starting pitcher who isn't on the roster as of February 14th who will make the opening day starting rotation. You said Louis Varland would be, This is these are the good ones. You got these right here. Yeah, good. Louis Varland will be in the Twins opening day rotation, which we haven't seen an official roster, but looks like he's going to be, right? Yeah. Okay, Declan, you want to contest something here? Starting pitcher. Nope, not starting pitcher. I, uh... I was looking at something for someone else on the on his prediction that was wrong for opening day, but the starting pitcher part is incorrect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought no. I was trying to help him out. I was trying to help yeah, him no, out. No, no, okay. I hear you. No, it was wrong. You it's said wrong. Mig- Miguel Sano will be on a 40-man roster at some point during the, the season. season. He made the 26 he made with the roster. Halos. The Halos Go. are so bad. He's Please. killing it in spring. You know what? Can somebody free Mike Trout? In fact, you know, why doesn't Mike Trout free. try to free Mike Trout? What I don't the hell know. is he doing? Shohei he Otani, bet on this. Mike Trout gets traded. But <laughs> just somebody free Mike Trout. And you're right. Mike Trout can free Mike What are we doing? Dude, Damian, Damian Lillard had the same situation in Portland. He finally said, enough. Enough. At least Dame like went to the Western Conference Finals and won some playoff series here and yeah, there. Like, to, Trout's yeah. been to three playoff games. I know. I mean, Dame went to Milwaukee, too. Yeah, by the way, a double overtime loss for Dame yeah, last night game. without LeBron James. In the Holy league, so. cow. Well, great game. Okay, I had a bad week, too. I should yeah. just stay away from college basketball. I said uh, Richard Pitino's Lobos would make so the down. Sweet 16. They got smoked by Clemson in the first round. So Should have known. 
said the Gophers would win the NIT. Hmm. I thought the officials uh, kind of screwed them there. Oh, in this okay. yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. About. Larry Nerd. Always out to Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Indiana State got screwed, by the way. That was an NCAA tournament team. Yep. They're just beating the brakes off everyone in the NIT. Yeah, uh, I said the Wolves would destroy the Warriors by at least 15 points in their next meeting. Great game. They beat the Warriors, but they did not win by at least 15. Fantastic game. I said the Grizzlies, this is before John Morant was out for the year, said the Grizzlies would climb back into the top 10 of the Western Conference standings. That is looking like it's not going to happen. I did say the Twins' opening day payroll would be under $135 million, though. There's some questions about exactly where it is, but it's, it's not definitely right. not $135 million, right? Correct. Spotrack says 118 or 19 I feel like it's more than that, but... No, um, it's you're fine. not 135 million. You're fine. Okay, listeners, nice little hey. week for the listeners. Michael said the Vikings would part ways with at least five current veterans and re sign two veterans of at least, so the veteran being two or more seasons of NFL cred. Well, they said goodbye to Cousins, Daniil, Greg Joseph. KJ Osborne, Greg Joseph, um, Jordan Hicks. Yep. Like, there's actually a number of them. And they said, now he said re-sign. Well, Brandon Powell, Austin Schlotman, uh, Blake Brandle is back. Those are all two-plus-year veterans. So there's yep. quite a few. So Michael is correct on his prediction. <laughs> Kyle said, between Sonny Gray, Jorge Polanco, and Max Kepler, only one of them will be on the opening day roster, Max Kepler. <laughs> and I want to raise this one here because it, there was a question about it last week. So Lane has this one still on the board. The Vikings will have at least two picks in the first round of the 2024 draft. Now, oh, a couple people on the internet and via email said That's the word have is different than the word make. Yep. So Lane oh. is saying the Vikings, the Vikings will have at least two picks in the first round of the 2024 draft. He's not saying they will make at least two picks. So with that, is it? I mean, I, this is probably correct, right? It's and it's probably a touchdown. It strikes me as correct, but I've got one question: Do we need to consult with legal? That's a great point. This is this is made for lawyer chase. Here. I feel like we're overstepping our boundaries if we make this ruling. Okay, from the bench, lawyer chase. If you if you could, if you are listening or watching this podcast today, should this be a correct point right now for Lane? Does it need to yep. stay on the board? Because they right now they have two first round picks. Mm -hmm. No, it's I I think it's you know? I think the people who said it's right are correct, but I'm just saying this to me the semantics we should probably clear those. Okay, we will summon lawyer Chase, who's on retainer. Always from Thomas. costing us an absolute arm and a leg. I know. Okay, Declan, kind of a mixed week here, but in the end, I think you'll probably take this. Uh, so we'll start with the bad. You said we'd see at least two double-digit seeds in the Sweet 16. Ah, Only NC State? It. Yeah. I did have NC State in my bracket, though. So, you know. Nice. Lots of chalk, right? Go Wolfpack. Lots of ones and twos? Yep. Lots, lots of ones all, and twos. All of the twos, which we'll get to in a second. You said there'd be a report that the Twins are considering playing Byron Buxton at first base or the Twins brass will address the idea by opening day. I have no. heard none of this. Uh, nope, the flap is gone and the center field is back. The in a classic kind of Judd like I forgot I made this prediction. I had no idea this was on the board. At some point, this could be like their next step, maybe if they feel like, you know, yeah. I don't know. But this is a home run. You said all four number two seeds will make the Sweet 16. And you did, I think, face value, we probably would have said, I don't know if that's a, uh, that's why, yeah. a home run. Yep. But yep. you said it's happened only six out of 44 times, which means yep. it's a very low percentage chance, obviously, and that's a home run. Hashtag Hembo. That. Did all the research and uh, so, oh, I so you're credit, just I credit Hembo here. So you're just stealing you're stealing takes from. Uh, well, I didn't steal Greeny takes. And Hembo. Hembo actually said in his bracket to eliminate a two seed by your Sweet Sixteen because historically all four don't make it. So I said, well, I'm going to do the inverse for a home run prediction on Shaka. my own yeah. radio segment. So you take that, Hembo. Uh, Thank you. I think this up. is the furthest that Shaka That's Smart better. has been, by the way, since like his VCU runs ten or twelve years ago. Yeah, Texas was a bust for him, right? No. And then this one's still on the board here, unless you've seen, I, we haven't seen an official roster yet, but
But sure. Declan said Josh Stamont will not be on the Twins opening day roster. It looks like he's going to start on the injured list, which would make this correct. But unless something's – they haven't released their official roster yet. So, yeah, I, just keep that one on the board. I think uh, semantically we do have to technically keep this on the board. I, okay. I think it's trending towards obviously likely a hit, but uh, we can't, I guess, jump the gun to you. I got a question on mine uh, from a note that Dex sent to us uh, yesterday. Is my oh. Michael Grady pick correct? I forget how I worded it. That's why I'm I'm asking with some question. Yeah. What was your? Do you, do, I said you, you know do when national or what? TV work. Yeah, I I thought I remember one of you two making a Michael Grady prediction yeah. about national TV. Um, there is there is no Michael Grady prediction in the database. Oh wow. Okay. I thought okay. I did a couple of weeks ago, but I, I, I also might have. Juggle said it out, out loud yeah. or or i might have i might have decided to uh, not do that take which i should have okay yeah i don't see i just control f i do he did not a TNT see game last night right he did kings and mavericks yep awesome so okay i don't yeah i don't okay seems like kind of shady judge just tried to get a point there for something well, Declan asked. I, I, not shady i Declan i asked. i asked because I, I thought that there was some yeah it rang, it rang a bell when i saw it and i was like hey is there is, isn't this a prediction so that, that's all it was yeah. Well, shadiness. So, so listeners are at 444 shadiness. on the young season here. Declan's at 357. I'm at 308. Judd toiling at 214. I'm up That's to the why Mackie he's start. scrounging for predictions. The Mendoza line. Declan and I have one home run apiece, and the other, uh, the listeners and Judd are still looking for the first. All-time career stats. Declan leads with a 360 average. Judd, 326. I'm at 272. Listeners, 263. Listeners have the most home runs with 55. So... There we go. A beefy accountability session. Let's get guest listener predictor Chase in here for his Write That Down debut. What's up, Chase? Hey, guys. How are we doing? Happy opening day eve. Hell yeah, dude. Same we got some some twins predictions lined up. Yeah, what's your background as a Minnesota sports fan? Tell us. Uh, I grew up in Minnesota up until I went to the University of Arizona, actually. Uh, and my parents had season tickets to the Timberwolves for most of my childhood, which was Unfortunately, like 2009 to 2016, which is about the worst <laughs> time you could possibly have typical season tickets. So I got probably more to, more affordable during that era to go to Timberwolves definitely, games. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> so okay, who is your favorite Timberwolves player from 2009 through 2016? Uh, it had to be Ricky Rubio. I know that was kind of the Kevin Love era, but Ricky Rubio was just so much more fun to watch during that time. Mm-hmm. I hope he comes back and plays a couple he's, he's not that old right he i knew he's got the mental health and some physical and what was the pop-up year you guys when we we were at spring training phil and and he tore up his knee but it was like a shortened season yeah and the wolves were a playoff threat until he got hurt against they the were battling lakers. for the eight seed yeah and they were playing the lakers in that short season he was guarding kobe and yeah, he just right. just went down and that guy it's amazing that iteration of the wolves they had a lot of talent they, you know, Kevin Love was leading the league in rebounding and scoring 25 points, and they never finished above 500. Rick Adelman. Anyways. Corner offense? Corner offense? That that was a scheme. His oh, scheme was okay. called the corner offense. <laughs> Get that tattooed, I guess. Rick Adelman's uh, corner it, offense. It worked in Portland, you guys. So It worked in Sacramento, too. Sacramento. Let's say. Yeah, yeah Sacktown worked pretty really well, That's too. right. So, Chase, you're going to lead us off here, and then we'll go Judd, Declan, and back to me, three trips around the room. What's your first prediction, sir? Write this down. Not to lead the day off with too much negativity here, but I think the Tyler Malley trade is going to start to look even worse this year. So I think Christian Encarnacion Strand is going to be kind of the next J.D. Martinez of the league. So write this down. Christian Encarnacion Strand will hit more home runs this season than any Twins player. Uh, well, that's a great <laughs> prediction. You've come to the right place. I like that prediction. <laughs> wow, dude. Yeah, he's that's he good. looks he looks legitimate. They've got a they got a couple former twins there, kind of anchoring things. Okay, Judd. Ah, uh, all right. Um, Royce Lewis will homer in tomorrow's game. So oh. in the opener, Royce Lewis <laughs> in Kansas City is going to hit a home run. I don't know if it'll be the first at, at bat. If, if I'm not mistaken, the Twins started off, what, what was the year after the contraction talk? Was that 2001? Mm-hmm. When Jack Jones opened the game at KC mm-hmm. and Bramer like had the great line of, take that to New York or something like that. <laughs> that was Dick's last great line. But anyway, Royce Lewis. Wow. <laughs> the drive-bys every <laughs> single time. Corey <laughs> Provis tomorrow. I'm so excited. I, 
bet you are. You My are guy Kip Scoggins just morning. did a Provis column. Nobody uh, loves to drive brain... by former Minnesota sports hey, figures than Judd Zolgad. Hey, I am. The, look, nobody, nobody loves Grady and Jim Pete like I do. But yeah, until of one of them leaves, and now you're going to be trashing them for. Yeah. Oh, I will never trash yeah. them for leaving. No, no, no. I'll trash them for becoming blatant down. homers, which they're actually not. Okay, Declan. All right, I have uh, I have three twins predictions related mostly to the start of the season. Uh, I'll start with this one. I'll make a similar one, but. Byron Buxton hits the first home run for the Twins this season. Yeah. I think he'll be batting second most likely tomorrow. I think he'll be batting second, but he'll hit the first home run of the season for the Minnesota Twins. Write it down. Okay. The number one Byron Buxton doubter, Declan. Oh, I have, I have another I have another Buxton prediction. I yeah. you know. Yeah, he'll I have another twist Buxton his prediction. Knee in, in the third. Not a doubter, just a realist. I'm going to start with, I'm going to take my Alex Kirloff optimism from this week's Scorner Twin Show season preview. I'm going to put it in to write that down for him. Alex Kirloff will finish the season with a career-high OPS. So this is his fourth year in the majors. His OPSs have been 722, 651, and 793. So he will have an OPS, a career-high OPS of at least 794. Write it down. Cool. Maybe he'll maybe he'll get over eight hundred. Get the glove down. down. Yeah. And, and if he doesn't play an inning at first base, that's fine. Just swing the bat. That's also true. Stay Speaking healthy. of drive bys, Declan, for no reason as Phil is trying to talk about Kirilov at the plate, get the glove down. <laughs> glove down. I can't wait because Declan's gonna be around the ballpark a lot more. If Declan takes this same venom face to face to guys like Kirilov in uh, the clubhouse. And Kirilov, and Jack, if he comes right. back, you know, I had a had a good conversation with Kirilov. We're on the same he's, page. He's no, a, you will not have a good conversation with Kirilov. Yeah, I don't he's think I gotta worry ass. about that one. <laughs> just hey, swing the bat, get an eight hundred OPS. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, I'm just saying he's a dead ass. Okay, Chase, what is your next prediction? Right there. And I'm gonna swap over to the Wolves here. I think if Cat is back in the first round. I think he's going to be a little limited still, and I think Ant's going to need somebody else to step up. So write this down. Nas Reed, the legend, will have at least one 20-plus point double-double in the first round of the playoffs. Let's go. I love it. The double-double, because like he's definitely going to score, you said a 20-point double-double? Yep. If Especially if Cat's out. Like Nas is going to score. It's funny. The rebounds are a little bit tougher to come by for him because he's not as much. Mm-hmm. He's literally playing like wing. Mm-hmm. He's much. They they list him as a center still on all the different websites and classify. He's much more of a three or a, like a three four hybrid than he is a five. Yeah, but playoff Rudy always gets phased out a little bit, so I think he's going to get some more opportunities in the rebound category. Okay. Write right. this down. All right, we're back to uh, to Judd here. All right, I'm going to uh, stick on my opening day Twins predictions. The Twins will steal two or more bases tomorrow. Okay. So they a couple of years ago they didn't run much. They obviously enlarged the bases last year. They ran I think a little bit more. But I think the Twins are going to use the little bit of their speed tomorrow to get guys in scoring position. And what do you think still swipes those bases. bags off the record? Yeah, off the record. Do you think swipes those bags? I think Correa steals a base. Really? I think there's a chance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Wait, yeah. how many? How many? Hold on a second. Look this up. That might off the record. That might be a home run right there. If you just say like Carlos Correa, what's his recent? Last year he had the foot injury. Yeah, that's Dude. what I'm saying. He's healthy now. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, are you looking at the same thing I am? Yeah. Judd, why do you think Carlos Correa is going to steal a base tomorrow? Because he feels good. He feels healthy. And I think Buxton or Lewis. Do you know when the last time Carlos Correa stole a base was? Two years ago. Keep going. Three years ago. Keep, Keep going. going. 2003. <laughs> <laughs> Tracking like that. It was on April 9th, 2019 at home See, against the Yankees. First, it's going to be his first time. <laughs> it's going to be his first time. <laughs> okay. I have a prediction after Dex. I'm going to okay. go in. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll make another Buxton prediction here. Write this down. Byron Buxton will start 10 games in center field between now and April 18th. That is 18 possible games he will start in center field not play center field start in center field at least 10 times between now and april 18th right it I think down. we'd take that wouldn't we we would oh, take yeah, that ratio take yeah oh, for april? yeah sure. there'd be some dh some off days built in yeah sure i'm good with that 
Okay, write this down. Write this down. Carlos Correa will steal a base this season. He will steal at least, and I think, I think that's a home run prediction. Is it not? He, has, he, he hasn't I mean, stolen a base since April 9th of 2019. And and one stolen base. I mean, he has only been he has only been caught stealing once over that stretch. Yeah, he, that, he's that, only that, attempted one that stolen that, base. That foot's feeling good now, though, baby. <laughs> that foot's feeling good. He's getting the lead off. He's getting the lead off the pitcher. Bases are bigger. He's can going. I, can I get a home run for this? He's going. The dude has one stolen base attempt I think so. in I don't five yeah, years. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, okay. Let's... I, I, I think so. I, yes. The baseball reference thing isn't loading, but I was trying to get the exact games between 2020 and 2023 because it's, you know, oh, 400 yeah, it, some games. But So get... it's been almost, yeah, because because it was like the f- fifth game of the year oh. in 2019. So he has played well, in, he's played in 552 games over the last five years. Yep. No stolen bases. Keep in mind, though, he couldn't, like last year, the foot hurt. Now the bases are bigger. Now he's feeling good about himself. Going to be youthful. Yeah, he's going to steal the base. Okay. Write this down. Dax, do you have something else? Or are you good? No, no, no. Okay, keep, keep going. Keep going. You're good. All right, Let's Chase, what's your third and final prediction? All right, I wanted to go with some kind of Vikings draft prediction. I just feel like there's too much steam yeah. all over about the QBs at the moment. So we're going to go in a different direction here. The Vikings will draft at least two non-FBS players in this year's NFL draft. Yeah. Ooh. Well, the, the, we just did a mock on Purple Daily from today where they drafted a South Dakota cornerback. Yep. I think that was the only uh, F, F, is it FCS, right? So that mm-hmm. would be what South Dakota plays in. Okay. So Christian Boyd out of Northern Iowa, Mason McCormick, and Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. Both of those guys look really good. I think there's just too much small school talent this year to pass on all of them. Christian Boyd did like 39 reps on the bench press. It was crazy. That's pretty bonkers. That video is going around social media. That's our guy, Jeremiah Cyril's uh, client right there. We should, we should be nice. rooting for him. So did he, so after you do like 30 or 35, like does a coach hop on the bar to make it harder for you? Did, did they just let you sit there all day and 39 I'm pinkies. reps? I'm pinkies. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chase, awesome work on your first prediction. Since you've got this life-changing platform here on Write That Down, is there anyone in your life you'd like to thank that helped you get here today? Yeah, I already gave a shout-out to the parents for raising me in the great state of mm-hmm. Minnesota. Uh, so I have to give the other one to my fiance, Krista. She's a Massachusetts native, but she lets me listen to your guys' show all day, every day, and watch Minnesota sports whenever I want. She even has a Viking sweatshirt now that she bought for herself. So wow. we're making a believer out of her. She a Patriots fan by birth? She is, yeah. Red Sox fan by birth? Yep. Bruins, Bruins? fan? Celtics yep. fan? <laughs> yep. Dude, you're the saint. Well, the Patriots right. are about to enter uh, a really fun period here for them. So oh, they, yeah, they, they're pretty smart to switch not now. for the Patriots right now. She's smart to switch now. Like, this is a <laughs> brilliant change. Sell that stock. Actually, you should have sold that stock like four years ago, but you can yeah. probably still get some value on it. That sports doc. Chase, thanks for coming on, man. Great stuff. Good luck with your predictions, and we'll we'll see you again sometime. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Guest listener predictor Chase. Before we make our final trip around the room here, a shout out to Zero Res, helping with that spring cleaning that you've been putting off. Or maybe you've been with the snowfall here in the last couple of days, tracking in a bunch of grime. Well, Zero Res comes in with a 4.9 rating on Google, 17,000 reviews. And if you ask for the Score North special, you can get three rooms zero resified starting at just $129 and $75 off when you get those air ducts zero res clean. 952-ZERO-RES or ZEROResMinnesota.com. Say you want the Score North special. Spell it forward or backwards. It spells the same. Zero res. Write this down. Write that down. Okay, Judd, your final prediction. All right, so the uh, Gopher hockey team, men's ho- hockey team is in the regionals this weekend. What, in South Dakota? Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually, it's not the hardest one, no. but it's not simple. Um, and so write this down. The Gopher hockey team will not make the frozen four this season. Okay. The Gopher hockey team will not make the final four this season. Uh, they're, they're in the same bracket. If I'm not mistaken as uh, the Celebrini kid from BC, that's a good team. Who's the one seed in their bracket. I just don't feel like Boston. They're... Yeah. You, no. uh, BU is yes, yes. BC is the better team, not in their bracket though, but I just Boston's don't think this is going to be the year. They're, they've got 
their chance was last year. I still don't know how they didn't win that game. And you blew it. And you blew it. You blew it. Time. Faber on the bench. Cooley on the bench. I don't get it. Dex, your final prediction. All right. Last one for me. I'm going to now have a negative Twins prediction because I gave mostly two positive ones. Write this down. The Twins will blow a save opportunity in Kansas City. <laughs> oh, man. They will blow a save opportunity. Someone will be credited with a blown save. Yep. In Kansas City. Um, right. Off the record? Griffin Jack's off the record, your guy. Or um, who? Stewart? Jax? Jax could do it. Stewart could do it. I just, the, the, with, the, with the bullpen being in shambles, someone's going to have to pitch out of their skis, do it a little bit, and they're going to blow us safe. Yeah. They're going to blow us safe. You know, I, I'm going to bring some positivity here. All right. Write this down. I have, I have one that's a long term season prediction, but I'm going to save that for later. I'll just give you a quick little snippet. I want something to come off the board tomorrow. Pablo Lopez, opening day starter, right? Mm -hmm. Pablo Lopez, despite the spring struggles, will strike out the first batter he faces tomorrow. He'll start the season with a strikeout of the first batter. Okay. Jim Bowden picked him as your Cy Young winner for his predictions. He also had, and I've, you guys tell me if this is also an issue. So he picked Royce Lewis to win comeback player of the year. Do you think he qualifies as a comeback player of the year? So if you come back, play a chunk of the season, and, and we're go really good. gangbusters and quali- hit grand slams every at bat, like are there qualifications know. for that award? Do do we have um, strict know, qualifications? Man. He did it. I will say he had Carlos Correa third. Like I can, I could see actually if Correa like puts up Correa numbers, he played too much. He could get it. No, but you. But, I don't. But come, comeback player doesn't mean you were out. It means you were bad. Sometimes. Yeah, but Carlos Correa wasn't. I don't think he was bad enough. It was a really bad. Well, it was a bad season, year man. for him. Like, yeah. I, like if he if he's back to normal, like, like an eight like an eight fifty nine hundred OPS and Gold Glove defense, he I could totally see him winning comeback was, player of the year. But see, Royce I Lewis, he, I don't think he I don't think he should qualify for that. Award. You think of it more he's as like like a boy. Joey Gallo has a career year or something yeah. after almost being out of the league. I, Cody I like Cody Bellinger. I know. kind of feel like it's a lifetime achievement comeback player of the year award, right? Like he plays in a full season. So that therefore he's the comeback, but I don't, I don't if think you, that works. If, but he played a half season or he played like a third of a season and was one of the best hitters and players in baseball during that yeah. period. So I agree. I don't know. I don't know. Ah. I'm looking here to find out. It feels like there's got to be some type of guidelines. I think it's just perception. It's like, who do you perceive as the comeback player? Why of the are we year? doing it? I, I feel like it's mostly injury based or yeah, or it's someone popping up like a Joey Gallo having a career year or something. So, all right, go Royce Lewis. I'm rooting for him to win comeback <laughs> player of the year. Let's go. Go Twins. He Roll the boat, Scotty want that. If you're like, Roy, should the comeback player of the year? No, I'd probably oh, yeah. be, be like an MVP candidate. I think for, I think for him to win comeback player of the year, he would probably also be in the MVP mix yeah. though, right? Because he'd have to put up such a ridiculous season. I feel like if I'm his age, screw your comeback. That, that that's for old men. I think I think you're treating the comeback player of the year like like the most improved player. Where like comeback player of the year is that's all right, cool, whatever. Yeah, I was off the grid for a period of time. Most improved player okay. is offensive because it means that you were crappy yeah, no, before. No, I've got the perfect example. This fits the criteria. Byron Buxton. Yes. Literally could that not should play be center field. field had a yeah. flap. That, his knee had a flap get that one. the whole Amen. time. Like, like Carlos Correa. Carlos Correa played a good shortstop last year. Yep. You're right on Buxton. 100%. You know, Byron Buxton. He basically couldn't play. Let's he make was a shell of himself. He come was back, broken come back down. Player of the year. He was at the bottom. He was at the, in the gutter of baseball. <laughs> Pulled himself up by the bootstraps. <laughs> but not too aggressively, so as to not aggravate oh, anything. Yeah. Pulled himself up by the bootstraps. <laughs> and unfortunately, carefully. was put on the 60-day IL because the bootstraps broke. Both hamstrings popped. Uh, all right, there's your Write That Down predictions here. Minnesota Sports Good with stuff. Mackie and Judd and the Scornarth YouTube channel.